Welcome to our lecture online. Our Milky Way is basically divided into two main regions. It has the galactic bulge, the central portion, where we find many of the older stars. And one way to indicate that or to know that they're older stars is because they're mostly orange and red stars on the bottom right part of the HR diagram on the main sequence. And therefore, we find very little new stars in that region. We don't, we don't find very many yellow or white stars or even blue stars in that region because those tend to be very young stars and young stars are typically not found in the bulge. The galactic disk, however, finds both types of stars, but primarily some of the younger stars. Now, if we want to take a look here at this beautiful picture of a galaxy, one of my favorite galaxies, NGC 1300. Notice it's a barred spiral galaxy. It has this very rectangular central bulge and two spiral arms, one coming from each end of that bar. Notice that the spiral arms tend to be much more of a bluish color and the center portion tends to be much more of an orangey reddish color. And the reason for that again is that this contains most of the older stars that are primarily M and K type stars. And then here we have a lot of blue stars. Now blue stars don't stay on the main sequence very long, typically only 10 million, 20, 30, 50 million years at max. And therefore, if you see blue stars, you know that they've been formed in just a recent past, recent past again within the last 50 million years. And so we see a lot of star formation taking place here and virtually no star formation taking place there. So we've noticed that the newer stars tend to have much a much higher percentage of the heavy materials such as silicon and, and uh, carbon and metals and things like that in the star versus the older star tend to be primarily just simply hydrogen and helium with very small amounts of the heavier materials. And so if these stars form solar systems, well, when there's no material that can make things like the Earth, you don't have terrestrial type planets there. You'll have simply just mostly gas planets. The newer stars that have a lot of the heavy material in them also have these heavy materials in the protoplanetary disk that eventually turn into planets and therefore terrestrial planets could be formed. So we've categorized them in what we call population two stars for the very old stars and population one stars for the newer stars. Our sun, for example, is considered the population one star. The main difference is what is contained within them. The old stars, also known as first generation stars, these are stars that were formed near the beginning of the existence of the universe, they contain almost entirely hydrogen and helium, 99.9% .9 in some cases even more than that, closer to 100% of hydrogen and helium. Where the younger stars, the population one stars, are second generation stars. Now of course, we don't really have generations except the reason why they call them generation stars is because younger stars could have incorporated the remnants of some of the older stars when they became supernovas or when their outer layers had blown away during the transition from red giants into white dwarfs and planetary nebulas. So the inclusion of the remnants of supernova explosions which generate a lot of these heavy elements could then form new stars that contain a much higher percent of the heavy materials, 1 to 2 percent heavy atoms versus 98 to 99 percent hydrogen and helium. And yes, even the small amount relative to the whole quantity, that's enough for in the protoplanetary disk to have planets that are terrestrial planets versus just gas planets. And so the main difference in a galaxy, and a perfect example is NGC 1300, that in the central bulge of the galaxy, including our Milky Way, Milky Way galaxy, you find primarily population two stars. And in the spiral arms, you find primarily population one stars, because stars that are forming today, well, they will incorporate all those heavy materials that have been intermixed with all the nebulas and dark dust clouds and bog globules and everything that's in the galaxy that's a source for new stars. And so therefore, that's how we classify the stars in our galaxy. So why our sun is orangey? So why is our sun orangey? Well, it turns out from our vantage point, we have a yellow star. So when you look at the sun, and of course you're not recommended to look at the sun without protection, our sun looks yellow. So it's actually a G-class star, and therefore it's not one of those older stars. Well, we could also form newer M and K type stars, but our sun definitely is a younger star. It's only four and a half billion years old, 
and it was formed at a period where it could have incorporated a lot of the heavy materials, which it did. Our sun has about 1% of the heavy materials, and it also has the terrestrial planets. So a long time ago, what color was our sun? Our color, the sun has always been a yellow star, at least yellow star from our vantage point because the light has to go through our atmosphere. If we get into space and look at the sun, it actually looks more like a white star. So how does that fit into your point? So it turns out that the colors are not associated with type 1 and type 2 stars. It's just the age of the star. So you could have any sort of star that's a population 1 star, you can have any sort of star that's a population 2 star as far as color and size and all that. But it turns out that the stars that are forming today and the indication that in the spiral arms a lot of star formation is taking place because there's a lot of blue stars. The blue star simply means they're young stars. And young stars means that stars are being formed today. And typically a blue star forms one in a thousand or so, there's not that common, which means that for every blue star you see, there must be a thousand regular stars that were formed. So in these spiral arms, we can expect lots and lots of star formation, just like there is in our Milky Way galaxy. So all those colors they talk about are not meaningless? As far as the age, so the colors are not that important as far as the age of the stars. The only difference is that if you find blue stars, that means they're very young stars. Yeah. That's, the, that's a good indicator. So when we see regions of lots of blue on the galaxy, that's where lots of stars are being formed right now. And so yes, you're right that the color is not associated with old or new. It just means that if there's blue stars, there's new stars. Hey, that's a good, that rhymes. When there's a blue star, there must be new stars. That's not rhyming, that's the same word. Blue and new, that's rhyming. No, no. <laughs> when, when there's blue stars, there must be new stars. I like that. <laughs>